All right, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Sunday night, end of the weekend. It is October 1st, 2023, about 10.50 p.m., and yes, this is the Earthmaster, but I am under the weather, so you guys have to deal with uh, maybe a little bit of coughing and some sneezing. I don't know, but it's getting worse. I'm going to try to get through this. Uh, latest activity shows, well, disappeared here. Looks like some movement up into the Alaska area. Also, some movement in the California region, noticing the west coast out here lighten up like crazy. Still seeing some movement up here in Northern California. We did see, well, we've seen a 4.1 earlier this morning and then a couple other uh, earthquakes here in the uh, last few hours or so. Um, so still kind of watching the West Coast out here as we light up the plate boundary. Look at that. Pretty much right along the plate boundary, we're seeing things kick up here, including down around the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. That's a uh, 1.1. Not a big earthquake, but it is some movement showing up here uh, in the, the uh, pattern that we're seeing here across the plate boundary. So continue to watch California. Keep uh, keep an eye on the west coast. Alaska area, well, handful of earthquakes here. Nothing major going on, as far as I can see. Uh, very typical activity up here across the Alaska region. Um, into the Izu Trench. The Izu Trench over here across Japan. Getting a swarm of activity kicking up here. Uh, relatively shallow in the last couple of earthquakes here, but if, if you notice, this 4.5, about noon of my time, was 134 kilometers deep. And I always say it, and I always like to point it out, many subduction zones show this type of activity. When you see deeper movement quakes down here into the deeper regions, this is 134 kilometers deep, prior to these much shallower earthquake uh, earthquakes here that we've seen up at the subduction zone interface here. So deep trench quakes followed up by strain building up here across the subduction zone. Two earthquakes in fact. So continue to watch that. Uh, we've got a 4.5 triggering earthquakes up here across the Izu Trench and that means that uh, there's quite a, bit of uh, quite a bit of strain building up there. I'm going to try to get through it. Yes I am. Might have to whisper in a little bit. I don't know what it is. It's just a cold. But it's a good one. 4.6 Philippine Trench. Uh, 84, 85 kilometers deep there earlier this afternoon. A handful of quakes back building here across the Tonga Trench as well. Quite a few fours. The last one earlier this afternoon, 550 kilometers deep there for that earthquake. Uh, New Zealand, not a whole lot showing up here on the graph. As far as I can tell, or at least on the, on the globe. Um, but let's go ahead and double check because it looks like things are, uh, filling in slightly there across the New Zealand region. 3.5 about 30 minutes ago. North Island, 3.3, four hours ago. So things kicking up slightly here, mainly across the North Island, New Zealand area. Let's check out these drums, see what we have going on. There's some of those earthquakes popping off there across North Island and showing up over here as well. Doesn't look like too much activity down across the South Island as far as the seismograph stations go. There's not a whole lot down in the South Island area. All right, uh, Hawaii. Let's go ahead and check this out, see what we have going on here. Handful of earthquakes. Not anything big, mostly uh, around the Pahala area. About seven earthquakes there. The last one at 2.6. Um, let's see what else we have across the area. China's seen some movement. Um, it's pretty good movement up here earlier this morning, but it looks like things have halted for now. Um, looking at the earthquake 3D globe here. Shows relatively active conditions there, including a 4.3. It looks like around the Turkey area. A little bit of movement out across the Azores as well. The Atlantic Ocean further down south, showing some movement as well into the South Sandwich Trench. Let's see what we got down here. Looks like this one's pretty shallow, uh, but it's well inland. Look at that, ways away from the plate boundary. Normally, within this area, we'll see deeper movement quakes here, uh, you know, away from the plate boundary. But this is a shallow earthquake and away from the plate boundary. So let me see if this has been reviewed. It has been reviewed historical data here 
where she got most of the deeper quakes here into the subduction zone, this basin out here. Looks like occasionally we do get some shallow earthquakes, but not all that common, at least according to this map here. Might want to watch this area for some potential larger scale movement. Of course, a couple years ago, they did have that 8 point, I think it was 8.1. It struck down there. It was a year of the 8-pointers. I think we had three of them back in 2000. Um, I think it was 2021. Got a little bit of brain fog going on today. And, and I had a whole bunch of schoolwork to do, too, man. That was just fun trying to get through that. And on top of this new telescope I'm trying to work with, I it, I didn't get very far with that. Can't really uh, figure it out when I'm scattered brain right now. All right, let's go ahead and get this over with. Check out the space weather activity. Uh, looks like, what do we got going on there? A little bit of blackout. A little bit of loading issues there. This looks like it's a solarham.net issue, though. Uh, not for sure what's going on there, but... All right, let's go ahead and check out the uh, magnetogram image here. The latest. Watching this area uh, ramp it up slightly. It's looking somewhat complex. We've been watching it here over the last 24 hours or so. It's grown pretty drastically. We'll continue to watch that as that rotates and faces the Earth view. Um, these other sunspots out here do not look all that promising in terms of any flaring. And um, this area looks like it's slightly amplifying a little bit. But I think our main regions right now to watch are going to be back here across the uh, eastern section here. Eastern segment of the sun. Uh, current threat, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 45% chance. X flare around 5% chance. And um, no major roars in the forecast for now. A little bit of active conditions, though, up at the higher latitudes. But overall, I wouldn't count on seeing too much up there. All right. Uh, anything major going on for space or the uh, Storm Prediction Center? Well, it looks like there's a little pattern here kicking up across the area of western Texas, eastern New Mexico over the next couple days. Some severe weather threat. We'll check into that a little bit later tomorrow. Um, as far as the weather forecast goes, long-term models, well, let me check out the assembles out here and see what we have going on. Dealing with some cooler temperatures out here across the west coast right now, but this is going to scoot on out and provide some higher temperatures, hotter temperatures out here in California with that high pressure. Um, look, look what happens to this massive high that's been sitting up here for a long time. That's been uh, keeping the fall weather away from the East Coast. Uh, but that's going to change pretty drastically and be replaced by some much cooler air coming down across the Great Lakes and areas in the Midwest. California out here looks like we're going to cook for a little bit. Nothing major going on. Nothing I can't handle. Uh, and that should hopefully get replaced by some uh, troughing later on towards the middle of the month out here across the West Coast. I hope. Not a big fan of the orange blob out there. That means high, uh, for the most part, high and dry conditions. Anyway, all right, uh, what else we got? I think that's about it, folks. I've got to get out of here before, before uh, well, before I'm not able to speak anymore. Uh, Yellowstone, let me see what's going on here real quick. <clears throat> Looks like, what is this activity? Well, I don't know what that is. It doesn't look like earthquake activity here. <coughs> I'm not really seeing this activity show up across any of these seismograph stations. So something local here. I don't know if they're doing construction work or what uh, across, across that area of Grant Village. And over here, I believe this is some wind events uh, that was kicking up there potentially did show up uh, they all look kind of different so could be uh some type of weather events out there a lot of times I'll, I'll double check that just to make sure that we don't have any um, unusual stuff going on out there in yellowstone because we do get some swarms on occasion the winds right now not really that much of a big deal i don't know what they were like earlier um it looks like maybe around this afternoon time period well yeah, it does look like things were stirring up out here. Some peak wind gust out in that area of Yellowstone. 
Um, I'm guessing maybe they had some thunderstorms out there too. Uh, definitely some wind. <clears throat> so past six hours here will give us a good indicator. Oh, uh, there you go. You can already see some of those thunderstorms popping up there about six hours ago. And uh, just a little bit, looks like. Some scattered activity was up there uh, and then followed up by some wind. And, of course, those type of conditions will show up out here across the Yellowstone area. All right, folks, have a good one. Stay safe out there. Um, we'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow. Peace out.